that, you know, back in, in, in a simpler lifestyle would be there to help support rearing the baby. Like, that doesn't exist when you're in an apartment in Queens, New York. There's you know? definitely a thruple somewhere in a two-bedroom in Queens. In Ridgewood, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, like, yeah, that you know what? That guy has life figured out. Like, those women might not be hot, but, hey, he's plowing them. That's not nothing. He's got something working on. <laughs> That's not nothing. Now, it's, it's like it's like some Walter Frey shit, but like not rather Craster shit. But like I dig it. I like it. <laughs> not nothing. <laughs> Craster has it better than most people in Westeros. I, I thought you were just gonna say most people beyond the wall. No, which most people I would in give Westeros. you. No, he's not. No, he would rather just, like, be Podrick. Like, I mean, before his come up. You'd rather just be Podrick. Just walk around King's Landing. Oh. No, I think I'd rather be Craster. <laughs> <laughs> That's the life. Absolute sicko. Oh my sweet life. <laughs> okay, let's you know, let's get it going. Oh, we King of the Castle, the coo- King of the Castle, King of the Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Pod. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, but like Craster, we suffered a number of losses last week. Uh we, we took we took Southern Methodist against the Dukies. And also we're not allowed to pick against the Dukies anymore. Because there's something wrong with the process by which we're coming up with these picks to fade this team. This team's too good. Um, I gave out my pick, Kentucky minus two and a half is the best bet, and that was a mistake. Auburn really teabagged them. That was that was embarrassing. Um, yeah. Um, UConn. On, on, I, I don't know what happened on, in that game. Did you watch the UConn game? I did. I did. Um, I did not know that the Rice backup quarterback was in the game. So that's what uh that's what soured. Um that's what soured that event. Um well, they only the, not covered by the hook, to be fair. Yeah, but um yeah, they didn't score an offensive touchdown. Um, That's and UConn, and and UConn had like um, I think it was either a punt return or like a fifty-eight yard pick six. I I don't really remember right now, but um, there was like one bad play that really opened that game up. Like that was that was six to nothing. I think going into the half, that was a very very close contest for most of the game until that fluke play. Um, I just don't recall what what it was. But it's like one bad, one bad decision by Rice, and uh, the game got out of hand. Well, you know, and then in the a SM- number. Yeah, in the SMU game, they 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 turn over the ball five times in that game. Yeah, could happen. They turned over the ball five times in that game. Um, it, it's, and, look, it's always something with Duke. It's always something. It shit happens. It's always something. Like they won, I don't want to fuck with the these game. guys. Won the game. I bet um, it was tied, and I bet the SMU live money line to get my my money back. And Duke was driving down down the field. They're gonna kick a <laughs> field goal. They're gonna kick field goal. It's like, oh my god, fuck my life. I'm I'm losing this bet twice. SMU blocks the field goal. Um, overtime. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! So at least I got my money back on. on, on I, bet, and I bet two two units on SMU. So I'm really glad that uh, that that worked out for me. Well, everyone loves a good beat story. It makes up for the bad beat. Um, Oof. somewhere there's a man with a Duke money line ticket who's just like, fuck my that life. Was right side, right that. side, right side. Like, 
fuck my life. I tell you, I pick good, and then this bullshit happens. Um, well, look, we're 20 and 27 on the season. We're stuck a lot. Let's see if we can get even. But, um, but you know, let's not also not force plays. I like that we have a small card this week. Let's not force yeah. plays to get even, you know? Um, yep. Anyway, all right. Let's kick it off. Rotation three two one three two two. It is Louisville at Clemson. The Tigers laying ten and a half on a total of sixty one, and, uh, and I would definitely lay it before I took it. That's that's where I bet here. Um, and there's like only really two elements of this handicap. One is. So I don't know if you um, listen to any college football podcast or read articles or watch YouTube Only this or one. whatever. Okay. Um, no one this year is talking about Clemson, a team that is just absolutely, totally under the radar. And they only have one loss, and that's to Georgia. Um, now, their competition, um, you know, is – is not very high quality. Um, I don't. You can have, only play the like, teams in front of you uh, at exactly. some point, though, right? Exactly. But Clemson has just been quietly. They are quietly running a train on these teams. Uh, quietly, and they do it, and they've been doing it early in these contests. If you look at the box scores, they go up a lot in the first half, and then kind of back off in. Um, in garbage time, like significantly back off in, in garbage time. But they've just been flying under the radar. That's point they, number they, one. But, no, but you say that, right? But where's their defense at? Right? Like, I think that's why people underrate Clemson, because people don't think it's going to be a playoff winning defense. Oh, we, hey, sweetie, we don't need to win the playoffs. We just need to cover against Louisville. Oh, yeah, no, I think Clemson right. – I mean, Clemson should pull away from Louisville, right? Yeah. So, okay, so here's the other element of the handicap. Clemson just off, is off a of bye. Louisville, six games in a row without a bye. Um, and, in, and in that contest, in that time – let's pull this up – they have played – this will be the seventh game off um, uh, before a bye. So they played Georgia Tech, scrappy team. They went to Notre Dame. That game. They lost to SMU at home. They went to Virginia and won by four. They lost in the in the final moments of that game of Miami, fifty-two to forty-five. And then went to Boston College last week. They won that game thirty one to twenty seven, but Boston College was up um twenty to seven um at the end of the first half. Um so they have to go back on the road, uh, down to Death Valley where Clemson historically has been, you know, both uh uh straight up and and, and ATS monster. Like off the buy, I, I just I and and the ten and a half kind of is winking to me like we think they're gonna roll Louisville. So um, yeah, that's that, that's really just the handicap there. Uh, I'm not looking at any stats here. I think this is basically more narrative and and spot driven. Hey, I dig it. I like it. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, when in doubt, lay it with Davo. Like, off the bye, too. Great spot. Yeah. Great spot. Fucking lay it. I mean, look, could they be distracted at home and make the game closer than it has to be? Yeah. We've seen that a lot. But um, but I'd be surprised if Club Nick threw you out of the game. That would surprise me. So, so watch him throw three picks. All right. Good luck to us. Clemson laying ten and a half. All right, next one up. Rotation three five nine three six zero. Middle Tennessee visiting UTEP. UTEP laying three at home on a total of fifty one and a half. And I was surprised at this total. This total looks high, and I'm glad it's still high. 
Now, some people call that adverse selection. I just call it the market waiting for me, giving me a chance to catch my breath. No, seriously, both these teams are two, uh, two of the slowest teams in the nation, or I say among the slower teams in the nation. And UTEP has not exactly been moving the ball confidently this season. So I like this game to be played relatively without points. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, UTEP, besides an FIU game, they have not scored more than 21 points against an FBS opponent. So they, they don't move the ball too good. Actually, in the, they are among the worst in the nation at moving the ball, now that I look at it. But, yeah, I just the, was like, yeah, they're definitely below average. In the FIU game, they um, they had four interceptions. So that's how they ended up scoring 30 in that contest. Um, Incredible. I, be, I believe MTSU is, like, is statistically, like, one of the worst defenses in – college football. So that's why I would imagine this, this number is so high. People feel like middle 10 is so bad that they'll never get off the field, even against hopeless UTEP. Interesting. That uh, seems, well, that seems wild to me. I laid it with UTEP. Ballsy. Ballsy, because that was like, why on earth is UTEP favored against anyone and like favored at a key key number, like UTEP might just roll. <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, I don't I look if I I could if I, if UTEP won, I would I would have imagined it'd be something more like a twenty to ten kind of deal. Um but but yeah. I uh so yeah I like yeah I like this game to be played relatively slowly and not super competently. I like the under. I'm surprised that we got it over 51 and a half. All right, next one up, rotation three seven seven three seven eight. Now this one's square. USC laying two and a half on the road at the Huskies. Total fifty five and a half. And I absolutely love the Trojans to fuck up Washington. Absolutely love it. Uh, the Trojans are the more seasoned team, and they're the better team, top to bottom. Uh, I like the quarterback. He's grown on me. Uh, I like him. He's got, he's got, he's got a way about him. Uh, he's not. I don't know. I don't know. Moss is all right. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I like USC in this spot. I think that they're not going to be daunted by the road environment one little bit. And uh, and they'll come out of Seattle with a decisive victory. Yeah, I guess I think that feels right. Um, I, is Washington due? Like, they... They've they've had a really rough schedule in the last two weeks. Like they got their dicks kicked in by Iowa, and they really should have been. They were way more into that uh, Indiana game than than the final score indicates. Like they outgained them by a couple yards. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Like we let's let's go back to to the start of the year, and I think what we said was like Washington was at risk of not making a bowl game, and we said that USC, though with a difficult schedule, might be a decent team this year, and I think 
USC has just had some bad freaking luck. Like that Maryland game, USC had a what a two touchdown lead deep into the third quarter. They gave away that Penn State game. They had to go on the road to Minnesota, a very physical team, type of team that doesn't play the the type of ball that they're used to. Like, I think USC is 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 the right side here. I think this matches our priors. If I had to take a guess, I would imagine USC strength of schedule. Um, or perhaps even strength of record is one of the best um, in the country. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm going to bet this right now. In fact, just comparing what prices I can get because I I agree with you. Yeah, you'll find a flat two and a half at Caesars. <clears throat> All right. Stupid draft Love Kings. the Trojans. God damn it. Well, I believe DraftKings is minus 15 on two and a half because, you know, DraftKings yeah. always likes to screw you. Yeah, they do. Um, I use that stamp as an odds comparisons tool. Oh, you know what? Um, Bet Rivers is laying a two and a half minus 08. That's probably the best line around. I, 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 um, emptied my uh, Bet Rivers account uh, earlier today, uh, betting on the <laughs> Ohio State-Penn State first half under. <laughs> I love that answer. That makes me, that, that yeah, delights so me. I, I love that answer. Yeah. So let's let's see where that, um, you know, let's see where that, if, if I can um, get some of my money back there. Uh, this USC. Okay, sorry. Let me gamble, gamble. Oh, we're doing good here. But yeah, I, I do, I do yeah. like that, that Penn State, Ohio State first half under. Like, um, we could get, I don't, I don't know what your thoughts on, we could discuss it if you want. Well, I mean, I would, my, I would have thought that James Franklin would want to jump on the Buckeyes. Would so, have been my thought. Aller hurt his knee in the game versus Wisconsin. I I was on Penn State big in that game. I had three units on Penn State. Um, so I watched every oh, game. Um, they, yeah, the, the, the quarterback hurt his knee. So they brought in this guy, Pribula, Bo Pribula, who like was actually wheeling and dealing it. Like um, He was – like pretty accurately throwing short and medium passes, oh, more short passes, uh, was able to run the ball really well. He did a great job of managing the offense. But, like, yeah, Drew Lahr is hurt. And, like, okay, now Ohio State's going to be preparing for this mobile quarterback as well. Like, obviously Wisconsin wasn't. So, um, and you have Ohio State, this, I think they're – one of their offensive linemen is out for the year. They have another offensive lineman who got banged up. Um, Penn State is like it's the best offensive and defensive line that they've seen this year. Um, I think this is going to be a very physical game. Like I think this is this is tight buttholes in the first half, and then we we start opening things up, especially after all the bloody body blows start accumulating on on both sides of the defensive and offensive lines. No, I mean, it's a step-up game um, for Penn State. And for Ohio State, it's a chance to, you know, undo what happened against Oregon. You know, like, it's a really good opportunity to do that. And, like, they might rise to that occasion. Uh, Yeah, Ohio State might, yeah, might strangle the baby here. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I do like the first half under. I would probably parlay Buckeyes on the under. Yeah, if I were the, so inclined. I, I think this is kind of going to end up like last year, which was twenty something to ten or twenty something to thirteen. Um, mm, yeah, I think this ends up in it. Like we have, you know, potentially no, no matter what, even if Drew Alar is in, um, worst quarterback play on the Penn State side. Like Penn State, though their offense is 
um, a little bit more um, dynamic than it was last year with with Cole Nicky. They still don't really throw to wide receivers. Um, I, it doesn't really seem like Ohio State's like really super clicking on offense. Like they're they're fine, but they're they're not world beaters at all. Like um, they look kind of similar to last year's offense. Um, so. Yeah, that's it. And, and and both defenses are, are, are still solid. So um, I think we see a similar result as last year. Yeah, I dig that. That makes sense. All right, there we go. Bonus pick. First half under in Happy Valley. All right. All right, our last game of the night. Rotation 389-390. Texas A&M, fresh off of their triumph, home to LSU. They are laying two and a half on the road. At South Carolina, a total of 44 and a half. And I, I, I would imagine that you'd be in line to take the points. Um, I'm looking at the under in this game. Okay, interesting. <laughs> are these, are these <laughs> among the slower teams? I didn't realize. <laughs> um, no. So, uh, Texas A&M, um, is ranked 80th in the country, and I think South Carolina is either in the 20s or the 30s. But so they're probably like a standard deviation or less away. Um, so like I'm not, I, I it, South, so South Carolina moves the ball at an above average pace, but I don't think it's like really noteworthy. Well, um, I feel like if it's going to be a contest of paces, the bookie has definitely said which one he expects. Like the total of 44 and a half is a pretty clear sign. They yeah. expect the Aggies to, uh, to get their pace. Yeah. So, um, okay. On the South Carolina side, they're off a of bye. That's a difficult place, a, a, a night SEC environment. Their their defensive line is fantastic. Is absolutely fantastic. Um, they fucked up Alabama and they fucked up LSU. Um, this is probably the best offensive line that they've seen this year. LSU is arguable. Let's say like, but this is still a very solid offensive line. Um, but so I, I don't know if they're going to be able to wreck. Texas A and M, but I I I think they're definitely going to be able to disrupt what they're trying to do on on a lot of plays. Um, the other thing about uh, South Carolina's defense, like I don't know if you watched the LS, the Texas A and M LSU game, they came out with with a Texas A and M came out with Wegman, he couldn't really pass the ball well, and then they brought in Marcel Reed, who just ran read option. Um, and LSU was totally caught off guard. Um, oh my South God! Are you is serious? Gonna, That's yeah, how A and M blew out LSU. Well, well, we'll also I'll 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 mention that a little bit later. Um, there's there's other things in play. Um, uh, yeah, so South Carolina will be prepared for that. Um, so I don't think they'll be like as taken by surprise. South Carolina offense is just not very good. They can run the ball. They, 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 Laura Sellers can't, can't, can't pass very well. So I think we're going to have a pretty stout defense, a defense that is amped up to play at home at night after the bye, uh, ready for Texas A&M's bag of tricks, and um, a, a, a bad offense for, for South Carolina. Texas A&M, defense, excellent. Elko, excellent defensive coach. On the offensive side, if we bring in Wegman, he can't fucking pass the ball. He was the reason why they lost to Notre Dame. And as I said, Reed is, you know, he's a limited passer, um, and and they'll be prepared. Uh, and they started running the ball. Uh, Texas A&M started running the ball really effectively in, in that game last week. The reason why, like, the 38 points that they scored against LSU, you should take that with a grain of salt, is LSU missed three field goals, 
And then hmm. on a fourth field goal uh, uh, attempt, the long snapper snapped the ball into the field goal hole, holder. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Texas A&M got the ball. So <laughs> was that... And by perfect? into, you mean like off of his helmet? No, into the side of him. <laughs> well, the holder should have still caught the ball, though. I don't think he was looking. I think it was a timing issue. Uh, okay. Any, any, I think I think he was. I think it was on. It, looking back on it, I think it was on the holder and not the snap on the on the long snapper. To, to, to be honest with you, if 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 I remember correctly, no. But I do remember it hit him in the side as he was bending down, um, as he was bent down. So like that game, absolutely closer than than the final score, and. It didn't really feel like LSU was out of the game until the very end of the contest. Um, Interesting. And then, and otherwise, like Texas A&M, you know, South Carolina has, has, I think, a much more impressive record so far. Like almost beating LSU, they were one possession away from beating LSU. Not, not one possession, sorry, one play away from beating LSU. And they were one play away from beating Alabama. I watched both of those games. Um, Texas A&M has beaten Mizzou and Florida. And, of course, I mean, un- Louisiana State. And Louisiana State. But, as I said, that was a, that was a much closer <laughs> contest. Um, I'll give you that the score the... might flatter them, but it was that they won. They 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 beat the Tigers. They beat them. They they beat them, but yes, the score flatters them. Um, yeah, the beat Mississippi State. Unfortunately, Arkansas is not good. That's unfair. They're not. Is bad. That Arkansas being good? Uh, yeah, they're not bad. Like Arkansas, like. I mean, Arkansas is They'll up and down like their quarterback is, but like Ar- they're Arkansas, pretty good. Arkansas is going to make a bowl for sure. Yeah, they they might even they might even get seven games, but they're not. Um, you know, Georgia, Ole Miss, Alabama, Texas. You know, they're not like the upper echelon of of, of the SEC. Sadly, not. Not until they get a better quarterback, anyway. You know what? If they had Ewers, they would be. If, if and if Sark had to go with Green, the Texas wouldn't be number one. That's for damn sure. Oregon's number one. Oh my bad, number two. After Texas lost lost to Georgia. Right, right, yeah, whatever. Number two, number three, whatever. Texas wouldn't be whatever. up there in the playoff. Is my point. Like the shoe yeah. would totally be on the other foot. Texas is so fraudulent. I it, it, they almost lost to Vandy. I, I just wish there was more opportunity for uh, potential losses besides A and M. Like, <laughs> you, I, I, uh, I, why I, are I, you I, itching to get in front of this team? Because I think they <laughs> stink. You know, I'm an anti-Texite. I've been an anti-Texite well, since we started this podcast. I mean, well, what what will convince you? This year, yeah, they have to beat Texas A and M in College Station, beating Maybe. Florida at home, beating Florida at home, not impressive. Beating Arkansas on the road, I wouldn't be impressed. Then beating Kentucky at home, I won't be impressed. If Texas goes into, co- into College Station and beats Texas A and M, then I'll, I'll, I'll tip the cap. I see. Okay, very well. I was hoping you would say they need to win a rematch in the SEC championship. And I was going to be like, that's a lot. <laughs> You're asking a lot, but okay. Um, no, any, fair enough. any any team any team that can like – so if they go to – if they beat Texas A&M, that means they're going to the SEC championship game. So like, if, if any team that does that is um, uh, objectively – great team. Okay. That's interesting because we've had we've had some bad conference championship challengers over the years. 
That would be a fun off-season pod. We'd have to go trawling through football reference to find the uh, worst conference challengers of all time. Okay, that is that is a decent point. Maybe I'll put it this way: any team that makes it to a divisionless SEC championship game this year is a great. Team. Okay, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, you gotta be pretty at least pretty damn good, right? Come on, I mean, you know, yeah. you know, you don't beat Georgia and, and Bam and them. That's a tough team. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, well. Then again, he's got the guys, though, the quarterbacks. Like, Sark really got the guys. Like, and actually, that's probably what Ryan Day thinks. Ryan Day thinks when he gets Julian Sand in there, he thinks now those will be my years, the golden years. He's getting fired. He's done after this year. You, what do you mean? He, I mean, all he has to do is not, like, lose to Penn State and Michigan. He just has to win those two games, surely. Oh. They've allegedly spent ten million dollars on this team. Really? Ten million dollars. Yeah. Fascinating. I I think Ohio State can lose to Indiana. I mean, Signetti has taken the world by storm. We think anyone could lose to Indiana. That's that's a that's a look ahead before Michigan. I mean, naturally, yeah, that's true. That is a bad scheduling spot for the Buckeyes. It would be that and, would know, really be bad for Day. It, it would not be inconceivable that they lose this Penn State game either. I, I wouldn't bet on it, but it wouldn't be inconceivable. I, I, they're gonna open up a can of Tushy on Michigan though. Uh, they, they better. Then Day will be fired if they don't. That's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. But uh, but I would think he thinks he's going to get one more year and then he can start his reign of terror. But uh, but that's probably a lot of coaches, just one quarterback away. All right, what's our best bet? Um, the Clemson Tigers. The biggest favorite. All right, then. I was hoping you would say freaking South Carolina. Anyway, all right then. Laying it with the Tigers, minus 10.5. Doing it in God's name, image, and likeness. Mm-hmm. 